Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am Pastor Chips Davis of In Season Ministries, located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida. We're excited about what God is doing. And this day we're offering a refreshing impartation of God's word. Amen. Amen. How many know that God is not just the God of Christmas time, but God is not just the God of Easter. Help me say every season, every season. of our lives. God is the God of that season. Amen. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing. I'm going to be reading from the King James Mini, and then my wife, Pastor Bridget, is going to be reading from the Living Bible, and we're getting into the Word of God. We're continuing on in our series for this year saying, let's go forward. Help me say, let's go forward. Let's go forward. Amen. And today we're going to talk from part C of this series and we're talking from these two words. Help me say the response. the response. Say it again, the response. the response. And I looked up the word response in the dictionary. It says an answer or reply. As in words or in some action. Help me say your response. Your response. Say it again, your response. In other words, it requires some type of action. Amen. And we need to understand that in this season, as well as every season, God is looking for us to have a positive response. Amen. When he calls us, let me say he calls us. And, and when he prepares us, amen, then he wants our response to be positive. Can you say thank you, Lord? Let's get into this word, the book of Genesis. I want to go through this. We're talking about Adam at this time. The book of Genesis chapter 21. Excuse me, chapter 2, verse 21. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Are you there? Listen, I ask you to get your pencil and piece of paper, get your Bible, write down these scriptures, because Satan wants to steal the word of God, but help me say he's a liar. Say it again, he's a liar. He's a liar. Somebody holler, the devil, is a liar. the devil is a liar. And for that reason, we need to write the vision and make it plain so we can go back and study it and get this word down in our spirit. Amen? Amen. Again, Genesis chapter 2, beginning at verse 21. Here's what the Bible says. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Help me say, the first surgery was done by God. He opened up the flesh. He took what he wanted out. And then he did what? Closed the flesh up. Help me say, that's just like God. The Bible says in verse 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Verse 23, the Bible says, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Pastor Bridget, if you would read at verse 22 from the Living Bible. Read there. And made the rib into a woman uh -huh. and brought her to the man. All right, let's go up to 21. Let's start at 21. Go there. Then the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. A deep sleep. And took one of his ribs and closed up the place from which he had removed it. Help me say anesthesia. Anesthesia. Which, which is what we use many times to cause us to go to sleep. Help me say God did it first. God did it first. 
because sometimes when it comes to surgery, the pain is too excruciating. Amen? And it will cause you to pass out. But help me say, God told us how to do it. Amen? He put it in our spirit that sometimes you need to just put them to sleep. Help us say, put them to sleep. And when they wake up, it's all over. Amen? So God did this to Adam. Continue reading, dear. And made the rib into a woman and brought her to the man. So God took the rib out of the man and made a woman and brought her to the man. Verse 23 from the Living Bible. Read, dear. This is it, uh -huh. Adam exclaimed. She is part of my own bone and flesh. Wow. Her name is Woman because she was taken out of a man. Help me say the woman, the woman. is the only way that a man can be reconnected. Ah. God didn't take the rib out and make another man. So there's no connection between two men. Neither is there any connection between two women. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. The woman receives, the man gives. Amen. Are you listening? The woman receives and holds, the man gives. Amen? So therefore, Adam said, this is it. In other words, a light came on. She is part of my bone and my flesh. Her name shall be what? Woman, because she was taken out of a man. Yeah. Verse 24, the Bible says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. Wow. Help me say the man, the man. need to leave his father and his mother. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, in the marriage, the mama and the daddy have no say-so over the marriage. Because the man has left and became his own man. Whenever you in somebody else's house, you got to abide by their rules. Help me say, I can't be free in my parents' house. I got to move. Help me say, get out. get out. Say it again, get out. Yeah. I'm talking to you, get out. Yeah. Leave daddy behind, leave what? Mama behind, get out. Get out, get out. Yeah. And then, say then. then, the Bible says you can what? Cleave to your wife. Yeah. Yeah. And they shall be one flesh. You can't be one flesh in your auntie house. You can't be one flesh in your mom and daddy's house. Help me say the one flesh in your own house. Can you say, uh-oh, somebody need to say, ouch. The Bible says in verse 25, watch this, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were what? Not ashamed. Pastor Bridget, verses 24 and 25, read them. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife in such a way that the two become one person. Two become one person, read. Now, although the man and his wife were both naked, neither of them were embarrassed or ashamed. Help me say if there's no sin, there's no shame. Let me say it again. If there's no sin, there's no shame. Whenever there is sin, there is what? Shame. So the Bible says that both the man and the woman were naked and they were what? Not ashamed because there was no sin. Say no sin. Let's go deeper. The book of Genesis, let's go up to verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Here's what the Bible says. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of 
Eden to dress it and keep it. Help me say, God gave, God gave. the man a job. Man a job. Say it again. God gave, God gave. the man a job. Man don't work, man don't eat. Stop feeding lazy men. Stop feeding lazy men. When they get of age where they can look at you and talk back to you, it's time for them to go. Help me say, get your job and get out. Ooh, my, my, my. Can you shout, yes, Lord. Can you imagine the first man had a job? Help me say, Adam. God put him to work. Verse 16, the Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. Uh -huh. Say, oh my. oh my. Let's continue on. The book of Genesis chapter 3. Let's look at verse 4. Genesis chapter 3. Pastor Bridget, if you would, start at verse 4 from the King James Version. Verse 4, read there. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Stop. Didn't I just read? That God said, in the day that you eat of the tree, you shall surely die. Amen? Now look what Satan says in verse 4. The serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Help me say that Satan will always say the opposite of what God says. And this verse, verse 4, is the first direct lie in Scripture. Say, oh my. And you know who it came from? Satan. Help me say he's a liar. And he's been doing it from the beginning. Can you say, my, my, my? Continue reading verse 5. Do you read? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, the devil tried to make you think that he's smart, but he's a liar. You got to get the first attribute of Satan in your mind. Help me say he's a liar. So if you partner with Satan, guess who you become? A liar also. He makes it sound good. He makes it look good. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he will disguise himself as a what? Angel of light. But he's still the devil. Help me say he's still the devil. He's still a liar and he cannot be trusted. Can you say thank you, Lord? Verse 6, Pastor Bridget from the King James. Read, dear. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes mm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Help me say the woman looked, the woman looked at, a at a tree that she had seen before. Amen? Amen? But this time, Satan got in her head and made her think that that tree over there was more the desirable than all the other ones that God gave you to eat from. And she began to look in such a way that the look became lust. L-U-S-T. Say, oh my. See, when Satan gets in your head, he causes you to see what God has made in a different way. In other words, you stop seeing from the spiritual eye and you start seeing from the flesh. Yeah. 
And therefore, you begin to lust after something that God told you not to eat from. Help me say, oh my. Yeah. Somebody holler, the devil is a liar. And the Bible says this, I want you to hear this, that when Eve ate of the fruit, she gave it to her husband who was right there. Help me say the husband was right there. there. Say it again, the husband was right there. there. Now we read earlier that God gave the husband the commandment not to eat of the tree. So therefore, in a marriage situation, the husband cannot stop talking to the wife. The husband stopped talking, Satan started talking. When Satan got in the ear of the woman, because the man and the woman were one, God allowed the man to know exactly what Satan was saying to his number one, but he did not stop it. Men of God. Men in general, you got to get in place with God so that when Satan starts trying to tear up your family, you'll be in place not only to hear it, but to stop it. Can you shout, "Yes, yes, Lord? So the Bible says that he was right there doing the temptation. And when the wife ate, he ate. Also, say, oh my. my. Continue reading, dear. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Help me say, both of them ate. Say it again, both of them ate. Both of them ate. Pastor Bridget, continue reading. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open, Mm. and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. Help me say, when you are sinless, say sinless, sinless, you're seeing from the eyes of God. But when you sin, you're seeing from the eyes of the devil. We read that in the beginning, when there was no sin, the man and the wife were both naked and unashamed. But when sin enters in, help me say sin. Then sin stops you from seeing from God's perspective. And now you're seeing from the devil. Help me say a lustfulness. And therefore, you got to cover up. Help me say they covered up. Because now they found out that they were naked and they did not really like what they saw. Amen. Help me say God will keep you in perfect peace. But when you start mingling with the devil, you are never satisfied. Can you say, oh my. Continue reading there. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. Help me say the voice of God God. was walking walking. through the garden. Read the word. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now you have to understand that Adam was the first man. And Eve was the first woman. They hid themselves. You and I, in this particular year, need to know better. Because we have the advantage of the whole Bible. And the whole Bible tells us that you can never hide from God. Amen? So don't try and sin and think nobody don't see. Yes, you see, God sees. You know, God knows. Amen? And you should be ashamed of yourself if you're living in sin. Help me say, come out. Say it again, come out. I like what the artist Beyonce said. If you like it, 
you should have put a ring on it. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. Stop giving yourself to the devil and the devil is telling you that it's all right. Help me say it's not all right. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Can you say yes, Lord? Continue reading, dear. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? The Lord asked Adam a question, but he already knew the answer. Mm -hmm. Whenever God questions us, help me say he already knows the answer. So the real issue is, what will your response be when God asks you to question? Help me say, what's my response? Well, let's see how Adam responded. Continue reading. And he said, and he said I heard thy voice in the garden. Uh-huh. And I was afraid. I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. How in the world could Adam be afraid of the one who made him? Help me say God made him. And there was fellowship. Say fellowship. There was oneness. Say oneness. And all of a sudden sin entered in. Say sin. And because of the tree that they ate from, it gave them a knowledge of evil because they already had the knowledge of good because God is good. But when they ate of the fruit, it gave them a new perspective. Help me say evil. You've got to understand when you stay in God's side, help me say you see from his eyes and everything is good and very good. But when you fall into temptation and you become evil, help me say, now you have the evil eye and you're never satisfied. Do you not know that my satisfaction can only be found in the perfect one who is Jesus Christ? Can you shout, yes, Lord? Can you shout, thank you? So Adam's response was, I hid myself because I was naked continue reading pastor bridget has thou eaten of the tree oh my whereof i commanded thee that thou shouldn't not eat help me say a question question god again ask a question of adam mm -hmm. that he already knew the answer Amen. help me say adam sinned adam sinned and it caused a separation Amen? Amen. From the perfect one. Amen. We talked about a few weeks ago that God is the dresser, God the Father. He's the dresser of the garden. Mm. But Jesus is the vine. Help me say yeah. the vine. Yeah. Say it again. Jesus is the, fi the vine. Yeah. And we are the branches. Amen? Yeah. In other words, we've got to stay connected to the vine. Yeah. We've got to stay connected connected to Jesus. Amen? Can you shout, yes, Lord? If we disconnect, then we sin. So Adam's response was out of the fact that God told him something to do and he did something else. And now he was ashamed. Can you say, oh my? Let's continue on. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. Beginning at verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Beginning at verse 9. Let's talk about Samuel for a moment. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Pastor Bridget, if you would, from the King James, read starting at verse 9. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down. And it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Yes. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Help me say, Samuel, Samuel. was getting instructions from Eli. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Yes. God had called him three times. He thought it was Eli calling him. Mm -hmm. Now Eli gets the wisdom and said, if God calls you again, you say what? Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Amen. Watch this. And Samuel obeyed. Mm -hmm. How many times have we gotten instructions from God and we did not obey? Amen. Amen. Help me say Samuel, Samuel. obeyed. Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Help me say it was a double calling. He called his name twice. Say a double calling. And I like Samuel's response. Samuel's response was what? Speak, for thy servant heareth. How many of us are listening to the wrong voice? God is calling us, and he's waiting for our response. But our response is, I'm going to put you to the side, God, because I got things over here I got to get done. I got people to see. I got things to do. And when I'm finished with all of that, then I'll come to Jesus. Help me say, oh, no. Help me say, your response has to be like Samuel's response. Speak for thy servant heareth. Can you say, thank you, Lord? Continue reading. And the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. God began to impart into Samuel his plan because he had a servant that was willing to obey. Can you say thank you, Lord? So he began to talk to Samuel. He let him know that things were about to change. And it was going to cause both the ears of everyone that heareth to tingle. Help us say, God has a plan. Say it again, God has a plan. Verse 12, read, dear. In that day, in that day I will perform against Eli mm. all things which I have spoken concerning his house. Glory. When I begin, I will also make an end. Help me say, Eli instructed Samuel to hear the voice of God. But how about this? When God began to speak to Samuel, he told Samuel that I'm getting ready to judge Eli. Oh, my God. Help me say, Eli was the priest of the house. He had control of everything. And when you disobey God, God will raise somebody up. And you, the priest Eli, will instruct him how to hear from God. And God will give that person a message to say, Eli, you have been weighed in the balance. And you have been found wanting. Help me say, oh my. See, see you, you have to understand that God can use a child. God can use anybody what, to bring forth the word. See, just because you're in a high position, don't think that if you disobey God, that he's going to keep you there. Help me say, if God raised you, you up, he can bring you down. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Continue reading, dear. Read. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Read there. Because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Help me say, Eli's sons, Eli's sons. were sinning in God's house. Mm. Mm. And Eli the priest did not stop it from happening. Right. Say, oh my. oh my. People of God, 
When you come into God's house, you need to reverence God's house. Yes. Amen? Amen? No playing, no following, no trying to hook up. Amen? Amen? In other words, God's house has to be kept clean. Yes. And if this leader doesn't do it, God will take this leader down and put one in that will obey. Yes. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Help me say, Samuel. Heard the voice and responded to the voice of the Lord. But it will cost the demise of Eli. Help me say God's going to judge us. My daddy used to say God will give you just enough rope to hang yourself. In other words, you've got to come out of sin. Amen. Some of us live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday, Sunday morning at 1 a.m., Sunday morning at 2 a.m. Am I talking? Sunday morning at 3 a.m., Sunday morning at 4 a.m. In sin. Help me say in sin. And then get a quick nap and then come, come to the church. Help me say you're a liar. Amen. You've got to live holy. Help me say live holy. God's got to be a part of your Monday, a part of your Tuesday, a part of your Wednesday, a part of your Thursday. Am I talking? A part of your Friday, a part of your Saturday. Help me say every day. It's got to be a day that God requires. Amen? Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Let's continue on the book of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Let's talk about Moses. Amen? Exodus chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Amen? You see that? And what? And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horab. Pastor Bridget, verse 2 from the Living Bible. Read there. Suddenly, the angel of Jehovah appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Mm. When Moses saw that the bush was on fire and that it didn't burn up, uh -huh. Read. he went over to investigate. Then God called out to him, Moses, Moses, who is it? Moses asked. Let me say another double calling. God called his name twice. Moses. Moses. And he said, here am I. Help me say that's, that's good there. Help me say that's good. So God called Moses. He said what? Here am I. Watch this. Let's go to chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4, beginning at verse 10. Exodus chapter 4, beginning at verse 10. The Bible says, and Moses said unto the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Help me say this is Moses talking. Moses talking. Verse 11. I want you to hear this. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto him. Who has made man's mouth? Oof. Or who maketh the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Verse 11, Pastor Bridget from the Living Bible. Read. Who makes mouths? Who makes the mouth? Go ahead. Jehovah asks him. Mm hmm isn't it I, the Lord? The Lord does it. Read. Who makes a man so that he can speak or not speak? Uh huh. See or not see? Read the word. Hear or not hear? Say, oh my. Stop right there. Help me say, oh my. Oh my. In other words, Moses was giving God an excuse. And God was telling him, I'm the one that made you. 
I know what's in you. Don't worry about it. Let me speak through you. Can you say, oh, my. Oh my. Pastor Bridget, continue reading from the King James. Let's start at verse 12. Go. There. Now, therefore, go. Go. And I will be with thy mouth. Stop. God says what? Told Moses what? Go. And I'll be your mouth. Yes. Continue reading. And teach thee what thou shalt say. And I, meaning God, will teach you, Moses, what to say. Yes. Help us say your response. your response. God was saying, go. And Moses was coming up with an excuse why he could not talk to Pharaoh. God said, listen, I made your mouth. Don't worry about it. You just go. I will do it through you because I am God. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Help me say, God had a plan. God had a plan. Now watch this. Verse 13. It said, and he said, this is Moses talking, oh, my Lord, send I pray ye, I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou shalt send. Pastor Bridget, verse 13 from the Living Bible, read. But Moses said, Lord, please send someone else. Wow. God told him to go. God told him that he would speak for him. He had a problem with his speech. He was slow. Help me say a little slow. But God said, don't worry about that. Just go. And you know what Moses told God? Send somebody else. Send somebody else. Help me say, oh my. Verse 14, watch this. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite, thy brother, I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Verse 14, Pastor Bridget, read there. Then the Lord became angry. Read it again. Then the Lord became angry. Read it again. Then the Lord became angry. Read it one more time. Then the Lord became angry. Whenever God tells you to do something, your response should be, yes, Lord. Your response should be, I'll do it, God. Your response needs to be, I'll obey Anytime you go against what God is asking you to do, it makes him angry. Well, yeah. Yeah. Now, God has to do something different. Mm -hmm. He has to call somebody else because you wouldn't do what I told you to do. Help me say, oh my. So you've got to understand, people of God. Yes, Moses was a mighty man. Yes, he was talking. But you got to remember that Aaron was also there. Now, help me say Aaron. Aaron. And if you read further in Scripture, you will find out that Aaron did some things that God did not approve of. you got to understand when God calls you, he wants your response to be yes. He wants your response to be, yes, Lord. He wants your response to say, God, I'll do it. God, I'll be. Whatever you want me to do, God, I will do it. Whatever you want me to say, I will say it. Stop giving God excuses for why you don't obey him. Mm. Yes. What will your response be when God asks you to do something? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, from the living Bible, then the Lord became angry. Say angry. Amen. Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. All right. All right. He said, mm -hmm. your brother Aaron is a good speaker. Mm -hmm. And he is coming here to look for you and will be very happy when he finds you. Help me say Aaron. Aaron. 
shouldn't have been there. But God knows what we're going to do. I want y'all to hear this. Help me say, God knows knows. when he asks me a question, what my response will be. Are you listening? If our response will be negative, God already has somebody on the way that will obey. Y'all got to hear this. Amen? Even though Moses went, so did who? Aaron. But God was saying to Moses, I really don't need anybody except you. Do y'all, y'all got to get the wisdom of this. Help me say your response. Say it again, your response. Your answer, your reply has to be favorable to God. So that God can get the glory. Can you shout, thank you, Lord. Lord. We looked at Adam's response. God, I was naked. Why? Because he sinned. Amen. We looked at Samuel's response. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Help me say that was good news. And God was able to use him. We looked at Moses' response. I'm so, so full of speak. I, 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 I can't do it. God says, I'm your mouth. I'll be whatever you want me to be. I, I, can't, I can't do it. I, 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 I can't do it, God. Send somebody else. And now God had to get what? Somebody else. You know what? I'm in a place in my life that I don't want anybody to do what God has for me to do. Amen? We need to get to the place like Samuel. Whenever God starts speaking to us, we say in response, what? Speak, Lord. In other words, whatever you want me to do, I yield myself to you. I give myself to you. My heart, my mind, my soul. God, you control me anyway. Amen. You have given me life. And I'm going to serve you. And when we do that, God's going to get the glory. Do you want God to get the glory? Do you want God to get the glory? Well, when he calls you, let your response be, speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. Clap your hands and give God glory. (laughs) Clap your hands and give him praise. On last week, we talked about preparation. Amen. Amen. Meaning anytime God calls us, he's already prepared it. He's already prepared us for what he wants us to do. Are you listening? But he already knows if we're going to do it or not. Some of us are slipping away in the darkness. And Satan is in your ear telling you you can't do it. Are you listening? Satan is in your ear. Telling you you can't stop lying. Mm-hmm. Satan is in your ear. Telling you you can't stop hoeing around. Mm-hmm. Satan is in your ear. Telling you you can't stop drinking alcohol. Satan is in your ear. Saying that you can't stop smoking. Satan is in your ear. Saying you can't stop committing adultery. Satan is in your ear. Saying you need the sugar daddy. You need this sugar daddy. He got to pay my bills. He got to pay my life. Satan is in your ear saying you can't work. Satan is in your ear saying you can't hold a job. Satan is in your ear telling you that you are less than what God has made you to be. But he is a liar. But he is a liar. But he is a liar. So the truth has to come in us. By speaking what God says. If God says I can do it. Then the word of God must come. I can do all things. Through Christ. Which strengtheneth me. Ah. The word say I must go. Help me say I must work. The works of him that sent me. While it is day. For the night is coming and no man can work. God is saying that you need to be the example. Then I need to say, God, 
I am the light. And if the light be hid, it is hid unto those who are in darkness. Yes. So I need to let my light shine. I need to let my light shine. I need to have the joy of the Lord coming, working through me so that I can win souls. For the word of God declares, he that winneth souls is wise. Yeah. If you've heard this word and it's touched you in any area, it's now time to come to Jesus. Listen, it's not about a one time coming and then you can go out and live like hell. Oh no. This is a lifestyle change. Yeah. This is what? A lifestyle Style change. For the Bible declares, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. So God wants everything to become new. So if you're halted between two opinions, if somebody has whispered something in your ear, that was not of God and you catered to it and now you're out of his will God is saying it's time to disconnect and be connected to the true vine yeah. which is Jesus Christ yeah. say these words after me Lord, Lord I, am a I am a sinner I acknowledge, I acknowledge that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died, for died for my sins I acknowledge, I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. I acknowledge that Jesus is the only way that I can reach heaven. Jesus, come into my heart. Clean me up. Make me new. Create in me a clean heart. I will live for you. I will serve you. I will obey you. And my response to you will be, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. If you said that simple prayer, God has come in and changed your life. You were once in the dark, but now you are in the light. You may say, well, I don't feel any different. It's not about a feeling. It's about trusting the word of God that says the word of God has changed your life. Now, here's what the devil would do. He would start bringing back all that old stuff that you just let go of and trying to get you to what? Entice you and lie to you that saying that living in the world is better than living for God. But let me say he's a liar. We read earlier that Satan told the first lie in scripture. And he has not changed. He's been lying ever since. The Bible called him a lying wonder. Every word. Jesus said every word that come out of his mouth is a lie. Yeah. So when you partner with Satan, he makes you what he is. A liar in darkness on your way to hell. And I say to you, whatever age you are, somebody died your age. So don't think like Satan is trying to take, oh, you got plenty of time. Look at mama. Look at grandmama. Look how old they are. I'm going to live like that. You don't know. Today might be your last day. Today might be my last day. The Bible says, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. But as for me, in my house, my hands, my house, my feet. My house, my eyes, my house, yeah. my ears, my house, my mind. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm Pastor Chip Davis of In Season Ministry, located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard, the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida. And again, we want to simply impart to you a refreshing impartation of God's word that allow you to understand that when it comes to living holy, God's not playing. If you live like hell, 
you're going to hell. If you live like heaven, you're going to heaven. The Bible declares that broad is the way that leads to destruction. Whole lot of people out there. But narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And you meet a traveler every now and again. So even though the churches might be filled, there are many people in the church won't be going to heaven because they don't understand that you just can't come to church. The church has to be in you, that you live like God when you leave the church. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Let me follow you around for a week. I'll let you know who you're serving. It might not even take a week. It could take by the end of this day that we'll know that you just came to church and now you want to go back to your old lifestyle. Help me say, leave it in the past. past. What's past is past. Amen. God is calling us. Will you respond favorably to the call? If you will, somebody holler, yes, I will. Again, I say to you these two things. If you just received Christ, you must start reading your Bible. If you don't know where to begin, I recommend the book of Proverbs that corresponds with the day of the month. Say, for example, if this is the first of the month, read Proverbs chapter 1. And each day that God allows you to live, read the proverb that corresponds with the day. There are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. In any given month, the most days there are in the month is what? 31. So there's a proverb chapter for every day of the month. Isn't that great? The second thing I require and ask of you that you need to join a church, a Bible-believing, a Bible-based church that preaches the word of God. Join that church and become a faithful member of that ministry so that God can bless you and that you will grow spiritually I say to you these two words that I say pretty much every day, be blessed.